Now, when children hear about death, violence and tragedy for the first time, be it from something they've seen or heard or even experienced, it can be difficult for parents to explain it to them. Lecturer in psychology and early childhood education, Dr. Mary O'Kane, joins us now to share her advice on the best ways to go about it. And this is a, such a tough area to cover. Oh, Karen, it, it really, really is. Funny, Kira, what you said earlier about we are struggling mm. as adults. And, you know, we, are, we find it so hard. We can't make sense of this. So we're also in a place where we're reeling, where you're, it's going over your mind all the time. So when we're struggling, it makes it even harder to find any way to say, make sense of it for a child or to support them. And what we're doing though as adults, certainly I'm doing, I'm talking to you, yeah. I'm talking to my husband, I've been talking to my mother, talking to friends. Yeah. We're, we're, I think, trying to find a way to work ourselves through this to make sense of what is happening when it doesn't actually yeah. make sense. But I suppose children don't have the language to do that, mm. do they? No, and that's it, Kira. We, you actually do that psychologically. In order to process something, you actually really, you need to go over it and talk about it. And because you are trying to process this information and um, a child actually really cannot process it you know there's so many stories at the moment and it's not just one they cannot process that information and um, you know the concept of death is so alien in one way we try to protect them so we think um, sort of Mary Poppins factor you know life is wonderful everything is perfect in the world and we're going to try and make keep them safe make them safe. there's nothing bad happens in this world and we actually can't do this we think maybe you know, they won't hear anything you know, if we if we assume that they may be hearing it in the yard in school they be hearing these stories from others and if we don't talk to them we don't know what they are hearing and the the different versions that they are hearing so it actually is a good idea to try and you know talk to them about life in general at the moment and see what they may have heard. Right. so do you think we should initiate this conversation with children I, I, I don't really mean initiated, Karen, as in, you know, have you heard about exactly, this? Exactly, yeah. But to actually, at bedtime maybe or whatever, to really spend time with them and to talk to them about their day and what's happening in their day, we usually say, let them tell you mm -hmm. what they have heard. Yeah. So let them take the first step. But we need to make sure we're available to them in order for them to do that. You know, at the moment, we were looking at headlines there. You know, I think... It's wrong of us to think that our children will not see a headline, will will not have a friend in junior infants who's heard this from the yard and will we'll talk about it. So I think we need to be really aware of connecting with them at the moment. And they will, They if we give them the opportunity, they will talk to us about what they may have heard. So do you think we should then ultimately assume that our children are aware of some of the particularly tragic stories that we have seen here uh, and violent deaths that people have endured and children have endured? Yeah. Should we assume our children are aware of something? Kira, I would go in with the assumption that they may well have heard and with the frame of mind of thinking, I'm going to really be aware of connecting with my child at the moment. So if they have, we have that space in which they, we can talk about it. Because if they have, they will want to talk and they will want to process it with you. They will want to try and make sense, just as we want to try and make sense, they will be struggling. So it's really important to give them that opportunity if they have heard anything. What language do we use? How much detail do we give? Yeah, this, this is another really difficult one as well. Um, the, the first thing about language is we need to be as honest as we can at a level that's appropriate. So it would be very different for little ones than for older ones. So say, for example, the story you were just covering. So if we say to younger children that you know, this is a really sad story, that the whole of Ireland is upset because three young children have died and it is so sad. And that may be all they need to know that, you know, as a country, we are grieving as a country. We are in shock about these three children. And for younger children, that may be all that they want to know. And how young, um, Dr. Mary, would we assume that our two and three year olds who have basic language skills are even able to pick up in those words? I think probably for two year olds or so, they're probably not really aware. It's more about the connecting. But for three year olds, four year olds, 
it, it is quite possible that they have heard this and they've just heard snippets. Mm. They've heard a few words of something. That they, they hear think, Charles, <gasps> they hear died. Like in our yes. house, we're like, what age will I die? What age will you die? Because there mm. is a stage where children become very fixated on death, which yeah. is quite alarming when it's your first time. And certainly yeah. Finn was coming, I'm talking about dad, oh, such and such granddad died and this and that. Yes. So, like, a pet even. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. it became very morbid. And he just thinks everyone over 100, you have to be 100 to die. Yes. So then when you hear exactly. the ages. This is absolutely alien and mm. if you think about some of the headlines that you just read out and they may be hearing mm. the, this wording and thinking what yeah that, 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 what is this so it is really important and it's funny the language you've said Karen as well we we say things uh, like say a pet has died and we yeah. use you know, gone to sleep or even with a grandparent they've passed away and we actually recommend using the wording they have died because we use these euphemisms and children kind of think oh but they're going to wake back up again yeah. and oh they've just gone off and they're coming back it actually really is important to use that language in very simple terms should but you use the language sorry doctor should you ask children are you worried about anything is there anything concerning you is it okay to say that yeah. or are you making them look inward and make them more worried mm. than perhaps they ever were. Yeah, I usually say start on the positive. So, you know, how was your day today? You know, how did you get on in school? You know, what was happening in school today? And so you're doing the positive. But if you, you know, yeah. as a parent, you sense when there's something going on. You know, you just know there's something and maybe they're not telling you and you know by their behavior and children will show us. When children can't communicate in words, what is in their hearts and in their minds, they communicate with their behavior. It's how they tell us what's going on. So particularly as a parent, if you sense a change in your child's behavior, most definitely say to them, not, a, not necessarily when you're rushing in a quiet moment where you're reading them a story, you sit down and you say, how are you doing today? You know, I've been looking at you and I'm thinking, you just, you're looking a little bit sad to me. Is everything okay there? And you know, in those moments, they will tell you what's going on or ask you questions. Can you admit that you as a grown-up are struggling to oh, process yes. and to say, actually, I'm finding this really difficult yeah. to, Karen, to get my head around? Absolutely. Again, sometimes we think we should have the answers. Mm. You know, there are no answers here. So we really don't be afraid to actually let them know we are absolutely struggling. Try and have a conversation over time. So mm. it, give them you know, bite-sized chunks, but you know, it's, this is not one conversation. It's a few conversations. Allow time for them to formulate questions because they may well have questions. They may come back to you the following day. They may come back the day afterwards and say, you know, I've been thinking about this and, and they have a question. Mm. So allow them the time to process. What behaviours signal that there might be something up? Oh, God, I mean, we all know, you, you know, if you have more than one, each child is an individual. But maybe difficulty sleeping, just not being themselves, a little bit of tearfulness. Um, you can nearly see the anxiousness in them sometimes. Change in an appetite, any change in behaviour, because they are so individual. Just think to yourself now, OK, could there, be, could there be more to this? Could there be something going on? And you know what? You know, sometimes we think, oh my gosh, they've seen this headline, they're distraught, and you sit and talk to them, and they say, my friend was mean to me in the yard today, and you think, oh, there I was, thinking that they mm. were really so anxious about this and you've got it wrong, but there's never any harm in connection. I mean, yeah. those times connecting with our children, you know, they allow them to share anything that might be on their mind. Is it the same approach for older children, if you have children in their teens, who very much will be aware, perhaps mm -hmm. of their own phones even, will be aware of what's going on and what has happened to certain individuals in this yeah. country? With older children, the chances are their feelings could be very high on this. And, you know, they will instinctively look at a headline and they will respond. And as adults, we realise that these situations are hugely complex and there is so much more going on here than a headline will ever tell you. So sometimes we have to be the voice of calm and the voice of reason and talk to them about, you know, the world, things happen in this world that we cannot explain, we cannot understand and sometimes horrifically sad things, tragedies happen and very often there is more to this situation. So you know, explosive response is not the way we want them to handle any tragedy in their lives in the future. We want to equip them with the skills to sit and to talk and to reflect and to consider that their 
the complexity of life. So with our teens, this is an opportunity to really speak to them about the complexity of these situations and not jumping to conclusions and not maybe going online. And we look at our teams online, going online and responding in anger at something to think of the feelings of so many people involved in a situation and to try and be calm. And I mean, again, that's you know, important for our teens to learn in any of these situations. In terms of doing something small but practical, I love what you say, is whether it's including children in the bedtime story, yeah. whether it's lighting up, or even sign a book of condolence. Yes. They really serve a purpose, those actions. Yes, these, and they might seem like very minor actions, Rituals, at any time of death, rituals are important to us. I mean, we always say in Ireland, we, we really acknowledge the importance of these rituals. And there is a reason for that, because they are helping us process what's happened. They're helping us come to terms, isn't a good phrase, but you know what I mean. Mm. We're, we're actually you know, psychologically processing things. So as small things like lighting a candle, if they're saying bedtime prayers to actually say little prayers. The schools are wonderful. You know, in a situation, say in Ireland, where you have an issue and a school is involved, NEPS will become involved. They will provide counselling. They are wonderful. So, you know, be aware of that as well. If anybody is close to a difficult situation within a school context, that NEPS are absolutely wonderful. And the critical incident plan will be put in place in any school and the school will come together as a community. So again, if you are closely involved in, a, in an area where your school is involved, that you know, there will be a whole community plan put in place and that's important to recognise. All right, great advice as always, uh, Dr Mary and Dr Mary are staying with us and we'll be answering your questions after nine this morning, so get them into us, Ireland M at virginmedia.ie. We'll take a break now. Join us for lots more shortly.